giving you a voice and making it loud our own way welcome, welcome to, to the fun. fun first updates now frc is produced in partnership with the blue alliance keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at the blue and by viewers like you we need your help to keep fun at loud live and independent Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. With our district and regional play winding down for the season, we've got the scoop on the strategy, the details on the defense, and the rundown on the recaps. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Audrey. I'm Ben. And I'm Connor. And first up, we have a giveaway on this show. Thanks to Redfish Robotics, we have some fun logo mugs. So let's bring on producer Tyler to talk a little bit more about what that is and how you can win. Yeah, producer Tyler definitely forgot to cue that up. So let's say <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll bring that up here. So our friends at Redfish Robotics are giving away uh, some First Update Style mugs. Uh, I know those who have won some have not received it yet. Please be patient as it is the middle of competition season, and it takes a little bit of time, but they will get out to you. Um, well, the, Connor's got one already, so there you, you go. You go. So, I won it in an FTC uh, show. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, you just have to watch FTC. That's how you get your mugs out quicker. So. That's what you should watch all the shows, everybody. Yep. But if you're interested in winning the uh, uh, this uh, first update now mug, which I'll throw up on screen here in just a second, uh, make sure you uh, follow the channel. Click that little follow button on top, where if you are a subscriber, you'll get five times chance to win. You go ahead and check this out at tinyurl forward slash redfishrobotics, where you can check out some of their other mugs that they have as well, too, that are here on screen. So good luck to everybody. There'll be a keyword to type in later during the show. Cool. So let's jump into it. Ben, uh, so uh, how did FMA District Champs pan out for you guys? Well, talking about this, not just as us, just as all the teams there. Uh, so I don't fully focus on just ourselves, but FMA Champs was really was insane, like it is every year here. Um, the whole level of play increases at the district level in such a good way, which is awesome to experience compared to what you get at the regional level. I know that there's a whole thread about this. Um, where Texas is talking about how much districts improved their level of play and gave them experience. Everyone who's not in districts highly suggests that you go to districts because it makes things way better for the teams. Uh, so uh, here's some of the real highlights here, too. FMA District Champs currently has the highest average match score out of all first events that have played so far, with an average match score of 72.38, of which only 1.9 or 1.59 was fouls. Uh, so not much at all, and there was still a ton of defense that was going on. There was an average of 17.1% rocket RP rate and a HAB docking rate of 78.8%, so that's ridiculously high compared to all the other events that have happened so far. The competition was super deep, and every robot there was adding value to the Alliance. So toward the end of the day, Friday, uh, 303, the test team was in a battle with our, my team, 225 Tech Fire, the number one position. Ultimately, 303 takes the top position and selects team 1807 Redbird Robotics to their alliance, who is the top scorer by volume at the event. They would face off, uh, they were, excuse me, they would round out their alliance with team 708 Hatters Robotics as a defensive force. So team 225 Tech Fire took the number two position and selected their alliance partner from Montgomery, 747 flight crew as the first round selection. So for what's interesting for those of you who don't realize it from last week here, but 747 is a robot that only scores a hatch and standstorm, plays defense, and level climbs at level three climbs at the end of the match. So we rounded out our alliance on the back half with 5401, which was a robot that had soloed the rocket several times before at FMA Champs and also the previous week at Ben Salem. So a robot that it could consistently solo the rocket by themselves. Uh, offensive depth was clearly super deep, and powerful robots worth 20 to, uh, excuse me, worth 12 game pieces went unpicked. Uh, for example, shout out to 223, um, in my opinion, best robot at FMA Champs that didn't go unpicked. They soloed a rocket by themselves. Really is crazy, the depth there. Uh, Alliance number three was very strong. They consisted of 1923, the Midnight Inventors, 222, the Tigertrons, and 1403, Cougar Robotics. 
1923 really worked to build the strongest offensive alliance in the competition. Alliance number five was also a very strong team of 2607, the Fighting Robo Vikings, 11, Mort, and 1279, Cold Fusion. So alliances one, two, three, and five move on to the semis with only Alliance three having a brief upset where they figured out the coordination of three robots. After they figured it out, they put up the highest unpenalized score of the playoff rounds in their second quarterfinal match. Alliance number one faced Alliance number five where the defense of 1279 proved effective at taking down the number one alliance. Number five won in two matches. So then we had number two versus number three, which was much closer, where number two alliance was doing two plus D, one D, and the number three alliance was doing three robots in offense. Number two eventually took down the number three alliance in two matches, but the defense was only eight points between those two matches. So the three offense actually did very well against the two plus D when all the robots were coordinated and scoring well. Number two faced number five in the finals where the defense of 747 proved more effective than the defense of 1279. And number two of Tech Fire, uh, Flight Crew, and the Fighting Robotic Owls took home the win in two matches. So this is 747 and 54-1's first district champ win and 225's fourth, tying them with 2590 for the most district championship wins. Congrats as well to 1640 and 1403, two very good robots and two very strong teams for their two well-deserved Chairman's Awards. Wow, what a crazy event that was. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. It was great. Yeah, so let's head over to New York City, where we saw 51 teams race to the finish at our region's last regional at the New York Armory Track and Field. Of those, three were rookies, and a few were international, hailing from China, Turkey, UK, and the usual contestants from New York. We all kind of knew how this was going to play out. Uh, there weren't too many surprises. Um, there were a few robots that broke, but in general, it would be 1796, the Robo Tigers, that selected 694 Sty Pulse uh, to their alliance, and also 2265, the The Maidens. This alliance would go undefeated through the playoff matches, ending finals with a winning score of 77 to 53. Since 1796 and 694 already qualified for the championships, this event would have three wild card slots created, allowing the entire finalist alliance 4122, 1155, and 2869 to all qualify for the world champs later this month. Um, with a fun fact, this is the first time both 1155 and 2265, uh, they're from the same school, uh, Bronx High School of Science, and they will both attend championships together. Uh, this is the first time since 2007. Uh, congrats also go out to 1660, the Harlem Knights, for their regional chairmans. And one more shout out uh, to FTA Mark McLeod for his second Volunteer of the Year award. Well deserved. This guy is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, great job to him. Heading up north into Maine, we had 32 teams duke it out in 64 qualification matches at the Pine Tree District event in Lewiston. It would be 5687, the Outliers, who would seed first and pick up their biggest fans, 133 Burt, who is also their biggest fans. Go figure. They would pick up 4055 NRG to round out the alliance. Number one flew through the quarters and got tripped up a bit in the semis, but they ended up moving into the finals where they met the two seed of 1519 Mechanical Mayhem, 1768 Robo Chiefs, and 6161 Equilibrium. Number one seed would win the series uh, straight 2-0, making them our champions this weekend. Congratulations to 5494 Bizarre Bots on the EI win and 3467 Wyndham Windup on a well-deserved chairman's win. A uh, little fun fact, 133 and 5687 uh, both winning, respectfully seeding one and two. They had already played twice this season, so this event didn't count for them. In total, they burned 145 district points that could have gone to other teams. Wow. That's a lot of district points, folks. Absolutely incredible. Wow, that's pretty amazing. That's, yeah. that's a lot of points. <laughs> a lot of points. Oh, and I believe 1768 had played twice as well. Wow. So I think they burned district points. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat, please. All right, so moving down south now, uh, over in our other New England event this weekend, 39 teams traveled over to Hartford, Connecticut for one final chance at qualifying for the district championship next week. Seeding first after 76 qual matches would be Team 230, the Galehawks, who selected the fifth-seeded Cyber Knights, 195. 
This powerful alliance stormed through the playoffs, going undefeated and winning the event with an unpenalized score of 111 points. Crazy stuff going on there. Speaking of 195, they also won the District Chairman's Award here at Hartford, so let's congratulate them on that double gold. Incredible work that they do. I love them. Um, can't wait to see what they do at District Championships. Hey, guys, how do you feel about this camera view that's being shown right now where it's uh, over the Alliance Station instead of, uh, uh, like, from the side? I love it. I actually prefer it. I think this is a better camera view for this game compared to what we've been seeing in some of our other events here. This is this is pretty good. You can see everything that's going on. So I think the only disadvantage might be during Sandstorm and then seeing the Blue True. Lions climb, right? But past, yes, but past that, it seems to be a pretty good viewpoint. Yeah, yes. we, were, we were watching this in our shop, um, seeing if we would qualify for District Champs. Unfortunately, no. Mm -hmm. But... Um, we uh, it was really hard for us to to figure out uh, who would, who got what climb and who didn't on the blue alliance. But uh, other than that, I, I like the uh, the fact that it's not switching camera views every two milliseconds. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> so on the topic of uh, discussing things, I'm going to lead into our discussion topic today. Here, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the FMA district champs. And specifically, we're going to have Ben talk a little bit more about 225's decision to decline the number one seeded team, 303, and take instead as their first pick a defensive robot, Team four, that 747 Flight Crew. All right. So um, I'm, I'm going to preface this here. After, at the end of day Friday, we knew that there were really three X factors at the competition. There was ourselves. Uh, 1807, that Redbird Robotics, and 747 Flight Crew. Three robots that really stood out above the others for different reasons there. Um, so we knew our best way out of the competition was with one of those other two robots. Um, 747 was unique in the fact that we played with them before. We did would run essentially the same strategy here at FMA Champs. Um, so ultimately, we love 303, but really felt we couldn't make it work this time. We actually off-field declined them. And they had to do it on field for reasons I won't get into here. But needless to say, um, we uh, have tremendous respect for them. And 303 is so awesome. We love their team so much. And unfortunately, we just couldn't make it work this time. Um, defensive depth really didn't go as far at FMA Champs as offensive depth did. Offense depth went down to Robot 25 or 26, where you could go down that far. And the average score was like six game pieces. And if you went all the way up to like number one, it was like eight or nine game pieces. So the difference really wasn't that much. So we rolled the dice again, just like we did at FMA um, at, uh, at Montgomery. And we were lucky enough to get 5401, who could ultimately do uh, 12 or 13 in their best matches. So it, it was really, uh, you know, pretty good. Um, 747 in particular, we were uh, zero and four against them and 14 and zero with them. So that was one of the reasons that we went that route. I think I got a question in the chat here. Let me open that real quick. That Tyler, yeah, we have uh, seat mark says, not gonna lie, 225 was one of the teams that was most heavily affected by defense. By picking 747, they neglected that and had a great shot at winning. I would say we were most affected by 747's defense. If you actually calculate out the numbers, we were scoring uh, averaging six to eight game pieces on when we were dealing with other robots who were not 747, but 747 cut us down way more. So um, if you look at other robots when dealing with 747, they were dealing with more like zero, where we would do more like four. So not to back ourselves up too much, I think a lot of teams try to say that we suck under defense, but in reality, we just suck less under defense than actually they do. So, you know, a little bit of a burn there. But that is what I got to say. Yeah, I mean, with, during Alliance Selection, when I saw you guys pick up 747, I was kind of skeptical at first because for being in New England, defense is a, it's a real thing. Almost a lot of teams in New England know how to play it and play it effectively. So you normally don't see a defensive robot get picked up first. So when I saw that, I was just like, I think 225 forgot how to scout. But then once once you and I, Ben, once we were talking about it uh, later on in the day, I was like, OK, now I understand where they're where they're coming from in this. And I hey man, it paid off. Um, 
So I, I, I apologize for, for that, <laughs> but, uh, no, but, uh, no, congratulations. That's a huge win. Yeah. We were all confused over here. Yeah. New York. <laughs> um, it, it's just crazy to hear about, um, the defensive depth, which like, I understand it's very hard to play effective defense in this game because of how crowded the field is and because of the fouls that people are getting. Um, but usually you can pull the 24th ranked drivetrain of a robot to play defense. Um, but that's not really the case this year. And I, I just think it'll be super interesting um, to see how that works out at championship level. And if we're going to see that uh, somewhere like New England District Championships or um, anywhere else. But really, um, crazy pick just from the outside. But understanding it now, it, it, it makes sense. <laughs> All right. So we got a question here also about how we would think uh, we would deal with uh, 1807 against 747's defense. Uh, if we were with 1807, we'd probably pick up 5401 again on the backside. And then we'd try the triple offense strategy that Alliance number three was doing. I think uh, with us and 1807, which had ultimately more volume than 1923 and 222 on average anyway. Uh, we probably could have done pretty well there. And also in that case, we're actually probably the pseudo defense bot where you score a few and then you go play defense on the other side. There's a whole bunch of crazy strategies you could do with that. So I think that we could have done it with 1807 as well, just because they put up so many game pieces and had that double hatch sandstorm, which was 10 guaranteed points from there. Yeah, so Tyler, I see you've started the giveaway here in chat. Um, so if you want to have a chance for a fun mug, um, you can type Tyler forgot in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> All lowercase, one word. Love it. Um, yeah, so in that case, anyway, we're going to move on to our Northeast Top 10 for the week. All right. So now we're going to lead in Northeast Top 10. This includes votes from the Northeast only. So if you're looking uh, for the Top 25 rank, you'll need to check out FRC Top 25 tomorrow to see where teams rank in that. So something so, to real quick add into this. Uh, we did make a change from Pat, from the last week now where for these top tens, we're only showing voters from the New England, uh, not New England, from the Northeast area, sorry, uh, from the Northeast area of our coverage for that. Yeah, sorry. But Connor, you're going to get enough teams anyway. So Yeah. Uh, but, so just keep that in mind that these are from voters from your area. Uh, so I always recommend, you know, go in and vote more and more. We had uh, nearly 600 total votes uh, for all of our regions today. So very cool stuff. All right, so going through the voters for the Northeast, our team number one is 5687, the Outliers. Number two, 133, Burt. Number three, uh, 195, the Cyber Knights. Number four, 225, Tech Fire. Number five, uh, 230, the Gale Hawks. Number six, 747, Flight Crew. Number seven, 303, the Test Team. Number eight, 1519, Mechanical Mayhem. Number nine, 1796, Robo Tigers. And number 10, 6329, the Bucks Wrath. So what do you guys think? Uh, first of all, six out of 10 teams from New England. Well done. Well played. <laughs> um, my vote got uh, You had two go. events too, Connor. <laughs> yeah, but you guys had the district championship. Yeah, that, that, that is true. But you've <laughs> also got more people in your district. That so is I true. think I'm going to throw that up there. Okay, that's fair. Um, my vote's got to go for 5687, the outliers, once again. Um, They're really an outlier, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're 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 on the uh the uh, they're on the end of the chart that's not really an outlier well it's yes but anyway <laughs> words i'm really bad with words today it's monday man uh anyway 5687 fantastic robot once again going into district championships strong uh number rank two or three i believe uh we will find out in a little bit um but man, it's just such a strong robot. And I love these guys so, so much. Um, I can't wait to see how they how they play out this weekend. Okay, so I I, I agree with this list for you know uh, top ten teams in um, New England. Um, but any actually stands for Northeast. I don't know if you guys know that, but um, <laughs> where are the Mar teams? Where are the New York teams? Specifically, well, where we, is to be fair, we do we do have three Mar teams on here, or excuse me, FMA. We have three FMA teams <laughs> oh, yeah, on here. Yeah, yeah. Um, where is so, so we're not totally four? unrepresented in this case. Sorry, I, I'm interrupting. Go ahead. 
four. Stifles. They're crazy good. I know they had a rough first day, but they're like one of the top five teams in New York. They played this past week. They've got this really nice buddy climb suction lift thing that's going to get them to Einstein. And then also, 1796, probably the arguably second best robot in the state, right? Ninth? I mean, not to say that they're better than some of these teams on the list, but you know, you know. Something to look out for, too, when you watch the FRC Top 25 is that you'll notice that the Top 10 list for that uh, is a little bit different than what the Top 10 list for people who live in USA Northeast are as well, too. So it's a pretty interesting change to see what people who live in the geographic area think versus uh, globally what the boats come in as. So anyway, that's uh, at you, New York. We got a boat. (laughs) All right. Uh, So on the FMA side here, I'm super glad that 747 got a spot. They totally deserve it for what they pulled off in the last couple weeks. And if you haven't checked out their matches, I highly recommend that you go watch 747's matches. They are the real deal, and they will make a splash of champs really hard. Um, 303, they fought through a very hard event to get the number one spot, so they're very deserving on this list as well. Great job to them. The one I'm disappointed that didn't get this spot is their first pick, 1807, because ultimately they were the top scorer by volume at the uh, at the FMA champs. And I really think that they deserve to be recognized here. 1807 is awesome. They had the highest OPR. They had the highest ball. They had the highest game pieces scored. They were very, very, very incredibly high on our list. I really think that they deserve some more recognition than they're getting right now. And really watch out for them at Detroit champs. They will be very good. So now we are moving into the last event within the Northeast for the regular season. The top 64 teams in the Beast of the East are set to take the stage in the most action-packed event so far this season, the New England District Championship at WPI. To give you a little taste of how insane in the membrane this event will be, here are your top 10 ranked teams district point-wise. In the number 10 position, 4761 Robockets, 9, 1922 Osram, 8, 319, Big Bad Bob. 7, 133, Burt. 6, 1519, Mechanical Mayhem. 5, 176, Aces High. 4, 2168, Aluminum Falcons. 3, 5687, Outliers. 2, 195, Cyber Knights. And 1, 78, Airstrike. With a record-breaking 154 district points. That has beat the all-time record of New England by two points, which I believe was set by Wyndham Windup in 2014, the inaugural year of New England District Champs. If last week's District Champions, District Championships events were any indicator on how New England will pan out to be, expect ranking points galore. If you have a sub-15 second level HAB3 climb, expect to be playing Saturday afternoon. We're going to see a lot more uh, rocket ranking points popping up as well. And some of those will be soloed, will be solo rockets. The teams that have sold rockets or are close to soloing rockets are 125, 133, 195, 319, 509, 1519, 1729, 2168, and 5687. Now, if any of you noticed that 78 is not part of that list, it's kind of strange, right? It's because they can only score hatch panels in level one. They were fortunate to be able to pick up 2168 in their in their district uh, in their district qualifying events because they can score hatch panels in level three. So 78 might be in a little bit of hot water at at district champs. Maybe they're coming out with a with with a new hatch panel design. We will find out this weekend. Now defense. All right. If you live in New England, you can play defense. As long as you don't have Mechanum or sorry, Mechanum or an all omni drive, you can play defense and you can play it well. This is New England. We are known for our defense. You can do it. So good luck to all teams competing this weekend. Uh, I will be there Saturday representing fun. 166 just missed the cut up. We're eight teams away from making it uh, maybe next year. But you know what? Uh, come around and say hi to me. Please um, 
please talk to me. I, lo- I would love to be able to talk to all of you. I'd love to be able to get some feedback for the show as well in person. You know, we're always about, we're always looking for feedback. What we could improve upon for next year? Uh, do you want to see new things? Do you, are there things that we shouldn't do? Let me know. I would love to be able to hear from you guys and maybe chat some robots. That'd be awesome. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> thanks to everyone who watched. Um, we really appreciate that you guys have stayed with us this entire season, and we like to thank everyone who tuned in halfway and you know stuck with us through that. Um, if you guys want more first robotics in your life and you like what we do here, all that you ask is you let others know about the show. You know, tell your mom. Uh, and then this is the place to go for more FRC in your lives. We'll have a few shows coming up in the next few weeks. We've got. Um, any, any DCMP recap, we've got some Detroit previews coming at you. Houston previews if you want to watch those, too. Um, if you got a few bucks to throw at us, we appreciate it. Uh, if not, we totally understand, and we're delighted just to have you here. On behalf of myself, Ben, Connor, and Sam, who's not here with us tonight, and our producer, Tyler, uh, thanks for tuning in. And our next show will be the Sweet Tea Recap, and we'll see you next time on the Nor'easter Region Recap. Um. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.